Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and uh, uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, in this particular video I'll be focusing on the human digestive system so this is the first video uh, in the human digestive system in which I'll be focusing on some of the components of the human digestive system so the uh, first thing is what is a human digestive system so the human digestive system is actually a system used in the human body for the process of the digestion now you need to understand what digestion is so the digestion is actually a complex process uh, of turning the food you eat into nutrients and those nutrients are utilized by your body for the production of energy for growth and for the cell repair that is needed to survive secondly digestion also includes the processes for the creation of the waste to be eliminated from the body now the human digestive system uh, it consists of different components and you can broadly classify them into uh, three types the first one that is known is the digestive tract and the digestive tract includes the mouth the pharynx the esophagus the small and the large intestine and the anus they are actually the uh, uh, components of the digestive tract the second sub component of the human digestive system they are the series of structure and organs through which the food and lipids that pass during your processing into uh, observable absorbable forms into the blood stream and structure through which the waste passes in the process of the elimination we'll be focusing on these in detail uh, in the upcoming videos and the third sub component of the human uh, digestive system they are the organs that contribute juices and these juices they are actually necessary for the process of the digestion and the important organ include in this particular category they are the pancreas the gallbladder and the liver and i'll be having a detailed discussion on the function of each of these organs how their juices contributes to the process of the digestion this is an uh, overview of all of the uh, components that you see in the digestive system starting from the mouth you have got the salivary glands in the mouth i have a detailed videos on the salivary glands and i'll share the links in the description that that is followed by the uh, esophagus uh, the stomach the uh, small and the large intestine the rectum the anus the uh, pancreas the gallbladder the liver this will be the uh, <coughs> excuse me these will be the uh, organs that uh, they will be releasing their juices to help in the process of the digestion so they, these are the uh, overall uh, components of the digestive system that we'll be focusing on one by one uh, the first thing that we are going to discuss is uh, that is known as the tongue uh, now the tongue in most vertebrates is actually an organ uh, which is capable of va uh, various muscular movements and the tongue is located on the floor of the mouth it simply means that the tongue is actually made up of different kind of the muscles and these muscles are actually responsible for the movement of the tongue uh, and this movement of the tongue is helpful in many physiological functions to that particular organism for example uh, if you talk about the frogs so in frogs uh, the tongue is elongated and it is adapted for capturing insect prey you may have seen many videos you may have seen that live how the frogs they catch their prey with the help of their elongated tongue uh, so because of the muscular nature of the tongue uh, that can actually uh, that can actually elongate and that helps in the uh, capturing of the uh, insect prey secondly uh, the tongues of the certain reptiles that function prim uh, primarily as uh, the sensory organs thirdly if you talk about the cats and some other mammals they use their tongues as instruments for grooming and cleaning if you talk about the human beings uh, the uh, in the human being the tongue play a variety of the roles the first important function that the saliva uh, that the humans uh, that the tongue play in the uh, humans uh, is actually helping the uh, infants in the process of the suckling the tongue is also responsible for mixing the food with the saliva and by mixing the food with the saliva it actually helps in the process of the digestion or you can say it helps in the uh, starting the process of the digestion 
Thirdly, the tongue is also responsible for positioning the food between the teeth and with the help of the teeth you are going to uh, break the uh, bigger uh, the uh, bigger food components or the uh, bigger food chunks uh, into smaller one which is easily to get digested. The tongue is also responsible for the formation of the food bolus. The food bolus simply means when the food is mixed with the uh, salivary glands or with the secretions of the salivary glands that is uh, actually known as a food bolus. The tongue is also responsible for the uh, initial oral stage of swallowing. You will see that in a while how it is going to help in that. The tongue is also an important accessory organ in chewing and swallowing. Uh, the tongue is a major bearer of the taste buds as you can see over here uh, this particular area of the tongue is going to uh, sense the bitter taste of the food these two areas are shown in uh, the green one they are going to show you the, uh, the uh, sour taste of the uh, food products this one is for the salty nature of the uh, food and this particular area of the tongue is actually responsible for uh, uh, for for sensing the sweet uh, taste of the food. Uh, the tongue is also uh, helpful in the, it also aid in uh, speech uh, and you talk about the human beings. Uh, another important component of the uh, digestive system uh, that is known as the pharynx. Now the pharynx, sometimes that is also known as the throat, is actually a cone-shaped passageway leading from the oral and nasal cavities uh, in the head to the oesophagus and larynx. Now when you talk about this pharynx, it is very really important because this pharynx, it serves both as a respiratory and a digestive functions. So the pharynx have got a role in the respiration as well as in the digestion functions. And in this particular video, we'll only focusing on the digestive functions of the pharynx. When you talk about the pharynx, uh, it is actually made up of the thick fiber of the muscles and connective tissue. And the uh, thick fiber of muscle and connective tissue are actually attaching the uh, pharynx to the base of the skull and the surrounding structure so it remains in a particular place in your body. Now, in the uh, pharynx, there are both circular and longitudinal muscles and the presence of the circular and the longitudinal muscles, they actually uh, help in the performance of the functions of the pharynx. When you talk about the uh, circular muscles, these circular muscles, they actually form constrictions that help uh, push the food into the oesophagus and prevent the air from being swallowed. While the function of the longitudinal fibers or the longitudinal proteins uh, or the longitudinal muscles that actually lift the wall of the pharynx during the process of the swallowing. You will see all of these things in a while how these particular muscles they actually work. Now the pharynx carries the food and air to the oesophagus and larynx uh, but there is the Plaf of the cartilage, which is called is the epiglottis, that actually stops the food from entering into the larynx. If you talk about this one, this is the whole structure of the pharynx, and it is actually subdivided into uh, uh, three uh, three uh, sub portions. You can see one is known as the oropharynx. You can see at this particular area, uh, this one is known as the nasopharynx. Uh, which is actually uh, you can say uh, connected which is actually preventing the entry of the food into the uh, nasal cavity and then uh, you have got the uh, hypopharynx which is actually present in the this particular area now if you look at the uh, function of the pharynx how it's actually uh, function as a, a digestive one when you talk about the tongue as I've told you this tongue is actually uh, pushes pushing the uh, bolus backward towards the oesophagus. So if this green one, uh, if this is the uh, bolus, so what the tongue do that it is going to push it backward towards the uh, oesophagus. Now what happens is when the uh, food bolus, it enters into the uh, this particular area when it is moving towards the oesophagus, uh, there is actually the movement of the larynx and the larynx is actually moving in the upward direction. This particular part is actually the epiglottis. Uh, this one is actually the larynx and this particular area is actually uh, your oesophagus. So what happens in when the bolus is moving downwards towards the oesophagus, what happens is that the larynx that is going to move in the upward direction. 
what happens next is that if you can see this one this is known as uh, the soft palate and it actually blocks the nasal pharynx it means that the food bolus cannot move in the upward direction toward the nasal cavity because the soft palate it is blocking that particular uh, uh, nasal pharynx so the food actually have got uh, only one way to move and this is towards the uh, oesophagus now what happens is if you can see over here now the epiglottis that is actually covering this particular trachea part this one is actually your trachea part so the epiglottis is actually covering the uh, trachea the bolus is actually moving towards this epiglottis if you can see this uh, narrow area over here so the tongue is blocking the oral cavity the epiglottis is actually covering this larynx and hence the trachea and the food bolus is only moving towards the uh, oesophagus and you can actually see over here that the uh, food now uh, that is actually moving towards the uh, oesophagus because the larynx and the trachea that have been blocked by the uh, uh, the epiglottis if you can see over here is the food bolus that is moving downward uh, the soft palate it is again moving towards its uh, normal position the nasopharynx that now that is open and you can actually use the nasopharynx for the uh, respiration uh, again if you look at this one when the food that has been uh, moved towards the oesophagus that has been uh, moved from the oral cavity into the oesophagus you can see over here now the oesophagus is blocked the larynx and the trachea they are open the nasopharynx uh, that is open because the soft palate that has moved uh, to its original position the epiglottis has been uh, removed from the trachea now that you can actually when you are going to respirate the air can actually enter in the through this particular area into the trachea and hence you can actually uh, respirate so this is how the uh, pharynx that is uh, going to uh, work now in the next in the next video i'll be focusing on the uh, oesophagus now, if you like the video please uh, subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it with your friends